Hi, and welcome to my video on the pacemakers of the heart. In this video, I'm going to briefly look at the basic anatomy of the heart's electrical system. But before I begin, please allow me to orientate you to my drawing. This is a longitudinal cross-sectional view of the heart. For those of you who aren't familiar with the different planes of the body, there is a sagittal plane, a transverse plane, and a longitudinal plane. A longitudinal view divides the body in half. So if you were to cut the heart in half down the middle and look at the right side of the heart, this is what you'd see. And down here in the bottom part of my drawing, you can see that I have a man here with a line coming down the middle. This is a cross-sectional or longitudinal view of the heart's right side. So if you're actually able to cut the body in half, scoop out the right side of the heart and take a look at it in your hand, this is actually the view you would get minus all of the animation and graphics and things that are associated with it course the labeling. So now, so I want to go into a brief primer on the individual pieces of the heart's actual conduction system. So to begin at the top of my drawing, I have a structure known as the sinoatrial node. This node is a natural pacemaker of the heart and it contains special cells called pacing cells that help initiate a heart contraction. So I have the sinoatrial node here in green and I have this graphic around that represents kind of an electrical event. Um, the pacing cells generate that electrical current, of course, that travels from, from those pacing cells to the lower region of the heart. But before the signal travels to lower areas of the heart, it is intercepted by another nodal pacemaker, the atrioventricular node, which I have here in yellow, or otherwise known in its simplistic terms, the AV node. The atrioventricular node is a secondary pacemaker located in the area of the heart, which is known as the ventricular septum. And septum is a Latin word that actually means something that encloses. So it's enclosed inside an area of the ventricle. One of the major functions of this node, more or less, is to catch and delay the electrical impulse, which I have here in blue, that's coming from the sinoatrial node or the SA node. This slight delay, the slight delay in the catching of the signal, which is literally a tenth of a second, allows enough time for the atria on both sides of the heart, time, allows enough time for the atria to contract, eject the blood from the atria into the ventricles, and that process is actually known as a separate process. It's called atrial kick. So, on a side note, very interestingly, if for some reason the SA node up here was to be destroyed, damaged, or isn't functioning properly, the AV node here actually acts as a backup, actually acts as a prime, a backup prime pacemaker. It can carry on the pacing responsibilities of the SA node. So that's really interesting. So if this, is, if this structure is damaged, this is a prime backup. So, continuing along with this diagram here, located below the AV node, right here, is a structure known as the bundle of Hiss. Right here, bundle of Hiss. So, this bundle contains pacing cells as well, just like the AV node and the SA node. It is important to point out, though, that the bundle of Hiss and the AV node have pacing rhythms. They're identical. Okay. So why is that important? Because essentially, the bundle of Hiss electrically connects, electrically connects, the atria and the ventricles, in large part because of its synchronicity with the AV node. Other, also, it is also an, 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 excuse me, an autonomous electrical generating structure, meaning that it generates a signal without influence from any other pacing nodes. It's an independent mechanism, but it does work in sync with the atrioventricular node. Anatomically, the bundle of Hiss forks and divides into two separate bundle branches, which I have sort of represented here, but not very clearly, but just know that it forks. One side goes to the left side, one goes to the right side. These bundle branches carry the electrical impulse to the left and right ventricles, respectively. From here, the electrical signal, which I have here in yellow, propagates down a network of fibers known as the Purkinje fibers. You can think of Purkinje fibers as the heart's electrical highway, a system of fibers 
that spread out all over the place, carrying electrical impulses from the pacing nodes. Pacing nodes here, here, and also at the bundle of hiss. Okay? When the current reaches the cardiac myocyte, so as the current travels down the Purkinje fibers and reaches the actual cardiac muscle cells, that's what myocyte means, cardiac myocyte, so cardiac muscle cell. When the signal actually reaches, goes through these fibers and reaches here, the ventricles actually contract and eject their blood. Interestingly, on a side note, if the pacing nodes completely fail, meaning that the bundle of Hiss, the atrioventricular node, and the sinoatrial node here at the top, if they all fail, there is a limited capacity for some pacing activity in the Purkinje fiber network down here. But it's not enough to maintain the cardiac output of a normal person for too long. So I just want to emphasize that this structure, this Purkinje fiber network, is not a pacing mechanism but it has the ability to pace itself under very, very stressful situations when these three structures give out for some reason or there's a blockage in the signal. So that concludes my video on a brief look at the heart's pacemaking system. I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions, please leave a question or a comment in the comment section below. And I'm sorry, I do apologize for the slight shakiness of this video. Um, it's something that I'll definitely improve with future videos, but I hope it was clear somewhat concise and helped in any way I can. Thanks.